salvation have cut their heads off and stuck it up here. You say, and now that God's using you, and God start blessing you, and he start prospering you, now you stuck your head up here. Oh, you say, Pastor, why you say that? Because that's how you are. When people come in the door, visitors, you should be greeting them with a smile, with a hug. Instead, you walk past them like you got an attitude and wonder why they don't want to come back to this church because you have a nasty attitude. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciple by the love ye have one toward another. Sometimes I don't feel like speaking to folk. My legs is hurting. My back is hurting. My head is hurting. But what do I do? I take time to smile. How you doing? I take time to hug you. I'm in pain, but I take time to show you love. Because who wants to be in a place where they don't feel loved? Amen. And you say, Pastor, I don't know why they feel loved. Check your attitude. Oh, all y'all done got quiet. You know why? Because some of y'all need to pull your head from out between your cheeks, put it back on your body, and start showing some love. Can I get a witness in the house? I know they say, Pastor, why did you say that? Because y'all need to get your butt out your, get your head out your butts. And if God changes your course, don't get mad. Well, I, 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 I can't do stuff at the last minute. I got to plan my way. Then you're going to be messed up because if God decides to change your, your course, you're going to be in trouble. Amen. Yes. Sometimes I have walked away from this church and the Lord said, I want you to go to Long Beach. He said, I want you to go pray for so-and-so. I want you to call so-and-so, go by their house, pray for them. And I'm like, well, God, I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat. He said, fast. Push the plate away. Stop satisfying your flesh and do what I ask you to do. I remember one time I was at home and God, the phone was sitting right next to me. And God said, I want you to call this young man and tell him don't leave his house. And I said, okay, Lord, I will call him as soon as I'm done. No, don't wait till you're done. Call now. And when I called him, he was at the door, locking the door, and he was getting ready to go with some young men to do a carjacking in Torrance. It's in my book, Hollywood Preacher. He was going to Torrance to do a carjacking, and he's always the point man with the gun. So when I called him, he was locking the door, he thought the guys were calling him. He said, I better go back in and take this call. That wasn't nothing but the Holy Ghost. Because he could have said, I, I'll call, I'll, when I meet them, I'll find out what they wanted. But they called. He went back in the door, picked up the phone, and I said, the Holy Ghost told me to tell you, do not leave your house. God changed his plan. And he knew that I was a real prophet from God. See, you, you play with these little, these little folks. Can I get a witness in the house? But I know God called me from my mother's womb. And I'm not trying to justify me, but my life is given to service. And I told him, don't leave your house. And he has seen me prophesy. He'd been in the service. He'd seen the miracles happen and got scared and said, I can't go. He called his homeboys and said, I can't go. They're like, what's wrong with you? You're the main man. You're the one that walk up on him with the gun. We need you. He said, I can't go because this prophet called me and told me not to leave my house. I'm sorry. I cannot go. Have so-and-so go in my place. And the brother that went in his place got his head blown off. And he said, Pastor, that would have been me. He lives in Utah now. He's married three beautiful children, and he's running for the city council of Utah. 
What if he had not listened to the Holy Ghost? See, some of y'all don't listen to God. You come here and say, that ain't nobody but Ernest. That ain't nobody but Bishop Johnson. That ain't, that's all that is. That's just, that's just Ernie. Hello, somebody. But I am standing in God's stead. And God is trying to tell you to save you. I don't know who the Holy Ghost is talking to. There's a young man. I had no idea he went to high school with Julia. A young man, she said she had a crush on, but she never approached him. A young man that I had no idea that she lost contact with him until what, two months ago? You started talking back to him? She was on the phone with the brother for two months telling him to come, come to church. Come, 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 come back to church. She had no idea that he'd been baptized in Jesus' name at this church and had been filled with the Holy Ghost at this church. And his pictures kept coming up before me. And every time I turned around, I saw pictures of him getting baptized, pictures of him getting prayer, pictures of him at school. He went to school with me. God put people on your heart for a reason. And now I found out he'd been murdered. Three kids, 25 years old. This is the first one that I knew that got baptized in Jesus' name, and I know he got the Holy Ghost. Usually people get baptized and don't have the Holy Ghost. But this boy had the Holy Ghost. I got him on video speaking in tongues back at the other church. And now he's dead and gone. You know why? Because he got caught up. And his head got up here. But God is trying to warn some of y'all that got y'all head all up here. That's putting everything before him. Do you know God said I'm a jealous God? Can I get a witness in the house? When you say I got to stop and go pray for somebody. I got to stop and go visit somebody. No, I need to take my family to the beach. Can I get a witness in the house? I'm not going to church today. That could be the day that you depart this life. And God is trying to tell you, we're getting closer and closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to declare to you that all this stuff happening with P. Diddy is just God taking a public figure and showing you what's going on in the community. Hello, somebody. What's going on in your neighborhood? What's going on in your family? All of this mess is happening. Amen. It's an indication of what is happening in America. And the Bible said the nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. When you see all this stuff happening in the P. Diddy, Jesus said in the last day, before I come, it's going to be like the day of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's a public, public execution of Sodom and Gomorrah. Repent. Get your life together before you are removed out of your candlestick. You're not here because somebody invited you. You're here because God is going to give you warning. One thing I love about God, sister, is he don't do nothing until he give us a chance. I had no idea that you were talking to him for two months, begging him to come to church. Can I get a witness in the house? And he gonna cry, assalamu alaikum. I saw a man on Instagram and he, the man said, I'm assalamu alaikum. He says, is Muhammad promised you eternal life? Well, God promised eternal life. Oh, Muhammad didn't? Buddha didn't? No, but God did. He took him to the scriptures and Jesus said, I will give you life. Amen. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Can I get a witness in the house? Don't sit here and hear this gospel and turn around and die. And die not saved. Well, I don't want to be religious. This ain't about religion. This is about you getting a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I told people, well, people have left our church and gone to all other denominations. It doesn't matter. Once you're baptized, once you're filled with the Holy Ghost, once you have what God wants you to have, I don't care where you go, what country you go to, you're going to take the Lord along with you. Can I get a witness? I feel like screaming up in here. 
Amen. Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. People out here, somebody made a valid point. And I'm going to share this with you. When you go to an opera, when you go to an opera, think about this, Hollywood Bowl. Anybody ever been to an opera? Anybody ever been to Hollywood Bowl? Where the seats go in Hollywood Bowl, they go up. When you go to a concert, the seats are down. Can I get a witness in the house? Why? Because in a concert, they will worship in Tupac. They will worship in Biggie. They will worship in all these celebrity folks. They will worship in Pop Smoke. They will worship him, amen, all of these crazy folks. They'll worship him and worship in their music. And God said, I will have no other God before me. Let me tell you a secret. Let me tell you a secret. I didn't grow up in the days of all the rap music. I was there with N.W.A. But back in our days, in the 60s and 70s and 80s, it was Michael Jackson. 60s and 70s and 80s, Elvis Presley. 60s, 70s, 80s, Donnie and Marie. And all these, these were the big stars then. And we loved their music, uh, uh, Funkadelic, uh, Flashlight. Oh my God, that was our music back in 78. Always and forever was our music back in 78. That's what we danced to. Can I get a witness? But when you went to a, a, a concert, they were worshiping these people, singing their songs to them. Can I get a witness? They knew more about the songs than they knew the word of God. And every superstar died between 40 and 50 years old. The guy from the Beatles, everybody that mocked God, God showed them that he was God. Amen. Every one of you that mock God, you're going to see that he's got the power. The guy that had the Titanic, when he dedicated the Titanic, he said, even God can't sink this ship. And it sunk on the main voyage and over 2,000 people died in the water. Mary Monroe said, I don't need Jesus. And she died in a place that's a church today at the Queen of Angels Hospital. Her room is, is a memorial that you died like a fool because you said you didn't need God. The guy from the Beatles, John Lennon, they asked him, how do you think you're going to die? He says, some crackhead uh, fan of mine is going to shoot me and take me out of here. He said, because I don't need God. And that crackhead uh, fan saw him and blew his brains out. Watch all these people that's mocking God. We went to see a movie last night. It's a horror movie. And everybody with these horror movies got to mock God. They put thorns in the head of the hero so she could bleed, mocking God. Can I get a witness in the house? Somebody said something about Noah. No, it was, uh, what's that comedian's name? Uh, not, not little Richard, what's his name? Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor got up and did a joke about Moses. He got up and said a joke about Moses, and right after that, he was lighting a, 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 a lighter, a big lighter, and the juice came out. The stuff leaked out and set him on fire. God said, I will have no other gods before me. If your alcohol and your drugs and your sex, if you put it before God, he will turn it on you and make it whoop you. You'll enjoy it in the beginning. You'll have all the fun in the world, but give it a good year and it will turn on you. He said, I will have no other gods before me. And guess what? Touch yourself. Say, that includes me. I need to get my butt out my head, I need to get my head out of my butt and humble myself, stop walking around with an attitude, 
Stop being mad at hell about everything and start giving God some glory and start praising him that I'm alive. God did not let me stay alive to walk around and be mad as hell about everything. Because you can't lead or you have to lead while you bleed and people that are hurt, hurt other people. When you've been hurt, you hurt other people. You tear down people, you destroy them and don't even realize what you're doing. And God said, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. You got to understand, turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus loves you. That's why he's giving you a chance. I had another young man in this church got baptized. He did not get the Holy Ghost. And he went about a year. He was going to church. He kind of stopped coming. And about a year later, over here in Watts, they chased him. Had a high-speed chase. They chased him. He turned down the street. The police surrounded him. And they all got out with their guns on him. And he put his car in reverse because he couldn't go forward because he hit the curb. He put his car in reverse and, and the police lit him up. They lit him up. Over 100 bullets rick ricochet red went through that man, that boy's car. And that boy was dead, but he'd been in our church for three, four months. You think you here because you cute? You think you here because you're going to church? No, you here because God is trying to spare your life. God is trying to save you. So what happened was, so when, 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 when uh, I said, oh my God, another one of our young men that got killed, but he didn't have the Holy Ghost, but that's no, that's no reason. But the thing is, they called the NAACP. I mean, uh, 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 all the big heroes was coming down here to march against the police until they found out what was going on. And you know what was going on? He just robbed a liquor store. How is it these people get up at these funerals and say, Charlie accepted Christ at an early age. Had he really accepted Christ, he wouldn't have been robbing no liquor stores. Had he really accepted Christ, he wouldn't have been stabbing nobody. Had he really accepted Christ, he wouldn't be carrying a gun to shoot nobody. Can I get a witness? Because God changes your heart. That's why we got so many crazy folk in the church. Because they're not really saved. They're not really saved. Hello, somebody. Some of y'all in here have saved. Let somebody say something crazy to you. Let somebody say something crazy to you. You put Jesus on the side and you want to go and act a fool. I had another brother was coming to our church. And he walked up in the middle of some gang talking about, no, I grew up with them. They ain't gonna do nothing to me. Walk right up and there was a young man that didn't know him. Soon as he walked up, he was talking with all the OGs and they're like, yeah, man, man, we understand. We understand, but the young one didn't know him. And he walked up in between them, in, in the back of them, in between him and put the gun right here. Boom! And when I went over to the cemetery, to the, to the mortuary, they were all there crying saying, homeboy didn't have to do this. We know this cat. But that's why you keep fooling around and there's going to be somebody that don't know you and don't know your OGs and don't know your homies. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. All y'all getting quiet, but the Holy Ghost is trying to warn you to get yourself together. Amen. Get your head out your behind and stop thinking you're the toughest thing in the world and that everybody... I'm going to deal with them. Because when God takes his hand off of you, I said when God, see the only reason you protected because God got his hands on you. The only reason you protected because God has his hands on you. Somebody touch your neighbor and say God has his hands on you. Don't get big headed behind his protection. He's protecting you right now. I want you to touch him right now. Say God got his hands on you. Amen. Get your head out your behind and humble yourself and get up there when the pastor calls for you and get in that water. Get baptized in Jesus name. Let God give you the Holy Ghost before it's too late. Can I tell something to all y'all that's thinking about backsliding? 
All y'all that's thinking you can live in the world still come to church, let me explain something to you. God said it's better that you had never known this way. You don't even have to come this way, but you know this way. You've been to church. You heard how to be saved. Some of y'all grew up in church. Some of your parents were saved. You know about salvation. And the Bible says it's better that you have never known this way than to know and turn around. The Bible says it'll be, you'll be worse than you were before you got the knowledge of salvation. Some of you are going to do stuff that you never thought you would dream of doing. Can I get a witness in the house? Just so you know, Diddy was raised in the church. But the devil is coming after the ones in the church. Touch your neighbors. He said he wants you. You sitting up here in church. He wants you. He wants you sitting up in church. And he don't just want the old young folk. He wants the old folks. Imagine young folks running around with a 25-year-old man. Hello, somebody. You 70-something years old. You run around here with some 24-year-old 20, man. Can I get a witness in the house? You need to sit down somewhere and pray and get ready for the Lord to come get you. Help us, Holy Ghost. And now ever since this stuff happened to, to Diddy, everybody's coming out with, oh, they groped me. One actor, uh, when all that got hot, he went to the police. This person groped me. The police looked at him like, as big as you are, football player, you let him grope you? We don't believe that. Everybody's calling stuff out like crazy, amen, because of P. Diddy. Ooh, they suing P. Diddy for money and don't even know ain't nothing P. Diddy had was in his name. So they ain't getting paid for nothing because he's broke on paper. All y'all got quiet. I'm not here to preach about Diddy. I'm here to preach about you. Amen. Tell your neighbor he's talking to you. God is talking to you. Now I've got a whole sermon of the first part of that when, when the Bible says in verse number 7, it says in verse number uh, uh, 7, uh, I've got a whole sermon on a draw from the water. <laughs> Tell somebody draw from the water. And there cometh the woman of Samaria said to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me the drink. From the first verse of this text, God is telling you, be ready to change your footsteps. Amen. The Bible says the steps of a good man. And anytime the Bible talks about men, he's talking about women too. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, everyone of you in here is good. Because if you wasn't good, you wouldn't be in the church. You'd be in the dope house right now. You'd be in the crazy house right now. You'd be out in, the, in Venice Beach getting to a fight right now. You would be out smoking a pipe somewhere. If God, if you wasn't a good person, I don't care sometimes you mess up, you make mistakes. That don't make you a bad person. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered. God is ordering your footstep, but you don't understand that it's him doing it. It's him doing it. My, my two sons, Raymond and Rennell, God ordered my footsteps and gave me a temporary job where they were and ordered.